Throughout the world, geologists and paleontologists find physical anomalies they cannot explain with the evolutionary theory. Hello, I'm John Gusty, and through a blending of scripture and scientific observation, the Hovind theory is a fascinating explanation of the flood, the ice age, the formation of coal, mountain ridges, and the Grand Canyon. Thank you for joining us. It's an honor to be here at Tennessee Temple University. All three of my kids went to school here. I almost went to school here, was registered and enrolled, and ended up going to Midwestern instead, Midwestern Baptist College. But it's good to be here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm going to share with you this morning what we call the Hovind Theory. What caused the flood in the days of Noah? I think Christians better have a good answer to the skeptics and scoffers. If you do any kind of evangelism at all, if you try to win anybody to the Lord, you're going to run into people who have a big obstacle to overcome called evolution theory. They've all been taught for years and years and years that the earth is billions of years old. It took billions of years to form the different layers of geologic strata. And you're going to have to overcome all that if you're going to win them to the Lord. First thing a missionary has to do is learn the language so he can talk to the people he's trying to reach. And I think we as Christians better learn some of the language and be able to reach the people we're trying to reach in this community and around the world for that matter. Now, the Bible teaches the earth is about 6,000 years old, not billions of years old. If that's true, then we better explain some things. How do we get these giant canyons on earth like Grand Canyon, even canyons on Mars bigger than Grand Canyon? How do we explain that? How do we explain the frozen mammoths, the big, huge, hairy, hippie elephants that are frozen standing up, some of them? Where did all the water for the flood come from? Where did the water go after the flood was over? These are fair questions that the atheists are asking, and we better have an answer for them. Where does the Ice Age fit into the Bible? Why do kangaroos end up only in Australia? Where was the Garden of Eden? What did God do before the creation? I mean, there are thousands of questions that we as Christians are going to come up against as we deal with the loss, trying to bring them to Christ. That is my prayer that this session, our video number six of our series, The Hovind Theory, will give you an outline or a theory of world history that will give you the skeleton to hang the meat on, this is just a theory. I'm not particularly attached to any, any, any particular theories. If somebody finds something wrong, I'll change it, okay? But a lot of people have influenced this, and I, so far, after 16 years of speaking and teaching on this topic, have not found any serious flaws with the theory. So if you come up with some, please let me know. We're going to cover three main things today. The creation, which we covered earlier on seminar part two, just touch on that. The curse, God put a curse on the ground. And then the catastrophe, the flood. What caused the flood in the days of Noah. We start off with the creation. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Before the flood came, the Bible says the people lived to be over 900 years old. You realize you could learn a lot in 900 years? Many people have never even thought of this, but Adam spoke every language in the world. Because there was only one, okay? Uh, and he was married to the prettiest girl in the world, too, by the way. Um, Things were very different before the flood came. We cover all that on videotape number two of our series. So get that seminar two if you don't have that one. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, Knowing this first, there shall come in the last days scoffers. Did you know there are people that scoff at the Bible? And the reason they scoff, it says, is because of their lust. They don't want God telling them what to do. That's the bottom line every single time. I've never seen an exception to that. After doing over 90 debates at universities and about 7,000 radio and TV call and talk shows, I'm convinced the only reason people scoff at the Scriptures is because of their lust. There's no scientific reason to reject the Bible, and there's no scientific reason to accept evolution. But they just don't like God telling them what to do. Bottom line. The scoffers are going to say, where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. This is called the uniformitarian doctrine. Hey, the way things are happening now is the way they've always been happening. Long, slow, gradual processes. We cover more on that on videotape number four. The Bible says the scoffers are willingly ignorant. Willingly ignorant. In the Greek, that means dumb on purpose. The scoffers are willingly ignorant... <clears throat> of how God made the heavens, and notice heaven is plural, and how the earth was standing in the water and out of the water. We cover more on that on videotape number two of our series, what the Garden of Eden was like. But the scoffers are ignorant of the creation, and they're ignorant of the flood. 
See, the world was overflowed with water and perished. The two things the scoffers are ignorant of are the creation, about 6,000 years ago, and the flood, about 4,400 years ago. They don't want to admit God created the world because that would mean he owns it and he makes the rules. And they don't want to admit there was a flood because that means he has the authority to judge his creation. And I think we as Christians better have a good understanding of what that creation was like and what that flood did to the world so we can understand how things are today and be better prepared to evangelize this world we're called on to reach. Now, the scoffers are also ignorant of the coming judgment. There's a judgment coming soon, folks, to a city near you. Well, the scoffers don't like the creation idea, they don't like the flood idea, and they sure don't like the coming judgment idea. But if we can get a good understanding on these three I think we'll be more effective in our evangelism of this world. The Bible teaches the world was created about 6,000 years ago, and God made a perfect creation. Dinosaurs lived with Adam and Eve. It was a wonderful place. We cover that on seminar two. And then God put a curse on the ground because of their sin. The Lord said, Adam, where are you? He was hiding, of course, because of his sin. He said, have you eaten of the tree that I commanded you should not eat of it? Adam's first response. God said, Adam, have you eaten of the tree? Adam says, the woman that you gave me, he tries to pass the buck, you know. Well, God, this is really your fault that I did this, you know, because if you hadn't given her to me, I wouldn't have this problem. And if you hadn't made her in the first place, we wouldn't have this problem. Everybody does that. They try to pass the buck, you know. Lord, uh, the woman that you made, in other words, God, it's her fault and your fault. But finally he confessed and says, yes, I ate of the tree. And then he said to the woman, uh, what have you done? And she said, well, the serpent, uh, implying that you made, tricked me and I ate. She finally reluctantly confessed. And then God said to the serpent, you're going to be cursed and crawl on your belly all your life. He said to the woman, one of your curses is the man's going to rule over you. It's one of the curses, girls. The husband gets to be the boss, okay? And it is a curse in many cases, okay? Um, and to the man, he said, you're, I'm going to curse the ground for your sake. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. This is a fascinating verse. God said, Adam, I'm going to curse the ground for your own good. It's good that the ground is cursed because now you have to work for a living. This is going to keep you busy. You're going to work all day. You're going to go home tired. What if, what if God provided everything for everybody all the time and you never had to work a moment in your life? All we do is sit around and think up ways to get in trouble. That's one of the problems with welfare. The Bible says God's welfare program is real simple. If you don't work, you don't eat. That was my welfare program with my kids growing up. You don't work, you don't eat. Plain and simple. It doesn't take long. They get their chores done. In the morning, you give them a list of things to do. You know, make your bed, uh, do your homework, blah, blah, blah. You sit down for supper. You all pray together. Lord, bless the bunch as they crunch the lunch. Amen. And you look, oh, stop right before anybody eats. Let's see. Uh, notice, son, your bedroom's not clean. And daughter, your homework's not done. So you guys go finish that and come on back and eat when you're done. You only got to do that once to get their attention. You don't work, you don't eat. That's God's welfare program. But in America, we've got a serious problem because we, we pay people to not work. And God said, cursed is the ground for thy sake. Work is one of the best things for you. It's wonderful therapy. The Lord said, in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, and then you're going to return to the dust when it's over. You're going to die. Then along came the...